I'm a little bit too into doing bases for my miniatures of late, and this week I wanted to try and make something drier than my grand's panties. If you're interested in creating a cool and unique looking desert base like this one, sit back, get yourself a cold one, enjoy the heat, and let's go through how to get this done. To make this, I'm going to take a standard base, and I'm going to choose to do it without a miniature on top. Now, you can do one with it in situ, but it's going to be a lot more fiddlier and a lot harder to do. If you can pop the little guy off the top, I'd recommend doing so. First thing we're going to do is be applying Agrolin Earth, an old favourite of mine, a texture paint, a crackle paint, a friend, a brother, a lover. As it dries, it cracks and it splits and it looks dry and arid. If you've watched my previous videos, you know I'm normally an advocate of applying this paint strong and hard. I've never actually put it on too thick because I like big ass cracks. I like big butts and I cannot lie. But in this particular case, this particular little fake desert, we want teeny tiny cracks. And I'm going to apply this quite lightly. In fact, having said that, I may have already put on a little bit too much for what I had in mind. I'm going to be covering about half of the base in a somewhat irregular pattern, which in time will dry and apply it the texture that I want at the front of the base. The crackle paint is going to represent the driest, most sunbeat and completely cracked part of my desert. All the water here has been completely depleted and baked away. This will do plenty. Don't worry too much if it's a little bit uneven. In fact, if it's a little bit lumpy bumpy, you'll get a bit of variation. The thicker parts will gain some larger cracks and the thin paint will get those smaller closer together ones. While we're waiting for that to dry let's use some ground texture by Vallejo to do the other half of the base. This particular paste slash paint is the grey sand but any fairly smooth ground texture should do the trick for you. Just like the Agri Earth I'll be using my big cheap brush again here. You don't need anything special, this work isn't highly technical and you certainly don't want to wreck one of your nice brushes. Grab a big dollop and let's get this applied even before the Agri Earth has dried. That way we're going to be able to leave them both to dry together, killing two texture paints with one bird. We'll start building this one up, lightly blending it together where it meets the Agrilin Earth. It doesn't need to be properly blended, I just want the transition between the two textures to look a little bit smooth and a little bit natural. We're going to want to keep building this up, making it raise towards the edge of the base, looking a little bit like a sand dune. Building it up and blending it from the middle, getting thicker and heavier towards the rim of the base. Now that I've got the right amount of ground texture that I want, you can see it raising up ever so slightly from the centre, moving into the thicker bit around the edge. Next I'm going to use a smaller brush just to smooth it out along the rim of the base, neating it up so none of that texture is protruding over the edge. My next step is going to be using the smaller brush again to add in some ripples to the sand dune. We'll do this by taking the back side of the brush, the handle, and sinking it just ever so lightly into the grey sand. As you pull it back out, smooth and slowly, it'll add a nice line, a nice ripple for you, and boom, the first ridge and the start of your sand dune looking very realistic. Softly, softly, catchy monkey, just do this ever so lightly a few more times, in and out. In, out, in, out, you shake it all about. And you'll get yourself a kind of sand dune wavy pattern. A few seconds of work and you'll get a very quick, great looking dune. It might not be perfect, this does take a little bit of trial and error to get the look and feel that you want. Plus each go is totally unique and will always vary, that's both a positive and a negative if you want to repeat the same amazing base you've done previously. But for the few seconds work that we just put into that, it worked first time, Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt and it's going to do me just great. Leaving this to dry I'm going to set it aside over the entire night, giving it a good 12 hours to sit. It doesn't actually take that long but I want to go to sleep so why not? There's a pro tip for you while you're doing these bases or any kind of long drying base. If you do them last thing at night, you're going to find yourself able to go to sleep and wake up with the night doing all of that drying time for you and the base is ready to roll in the AM. <sighs> Morning guys, new day, new dried paint. As you can see the Agrilin Earth has done all of the cracking it needs to do, looking quite arid there. Then we've got a kind of sand effect occurring on the other portion of the base that we were looking for. We're going to want to prime this and give it a nice white covering just like Christmas so we can start painting it. For that I am going to head to my airbrush, heck I didn't pay £40 not to use this at every opportunity I can, but in all honesty heading outside and using a can of rattle primer is not only just fine but might frankly be easier. I'm going to apply the white primer all over this base nice and thin in a couple of coats until it's nice, uniform, bright white and ready to take on some paint. 
all primed up and looking nice and bright and ready for that color. For the first pass of color, we're gonna be using some speed paint. Let's grab my trusty pop it as my palette and make up a custom sand color for this desert using some howling sand. Four drops of this. And let's make it a little bit darker, a little bit more yellow with a splash of sand golem, which will apply a single drop. Give it a quick mix together using the back of the brush works just as good as anything. Then using a reasonably sized brush, we're going to apply this newly created paint. I should think of a name for it. Leave name suggestions in the comments below all over the top of our desert that's both the aglan part and the gray sand part we're going to get this all looking the same color sand as with all speed paints we want to apply a single but generous coat let the speed paint do its magic pull into the recesses and retreat and pull off of the raised surfaces at the tippity top this leaves the raised part slightly highlighted and brighter than the recessed shaded and darker sections now a lot of this specific base is kind of flat so we'll need to do a little bit of highlighting afterwards just to brighten it back up and pop some color and texture back out. And I'm also gonna apply a highlight that kind of mutes the color and just make it look that little bit more beat down by the sun. Once that speed paint is dry, you'll be presented with a fairly sandy, deserty looking base already. For the next step, we're gonna make it look a little bit drier by adding a layer of dry brushing of ancient stone. This is one of those new paints in the Army Painters Fanatic paint range. It comes in at a light neutral. It's a fairly beigey pale white, which I think is gonna make this sand look all that much more. With this paint, we are gonna be applying it using the Army Painters Masterclass Miniature Dry Brush. It's a fairly small, soft bristled brush, perfect for this kind of work. Grab a dollop of the paint with a brush and wipe most of it off. For the first time I'm going to be trying out this dry brush texture palette that I got from Game Envy. Normally I just use a piece of kitchen paper but this texture palette alleviates the paint from the brush without taking too much moisture out of the paint. This can help reduce the chalky look that you can sometimes get while dry brushing and I'm going to try that out on this video. Then, just like any other dry brushing, we're going to apply this very gently, very lightly to the top of the base, catching all the raised parts of the desert, catching the edge of the ridge of the sand dunes, as well as the crackle paint that is raised up from the base, which just lets you catch the edge of each crack ever so slightly. And I'll probably do a couple of coats of this because it's important to do it gently, taking your time and making it look drier and drier until you're happy with the results. That's it really. A few quick, simple steps and we're pretty much done with the work but we can really push this a little bit further by adding some details to the base and we'll start with some straw tufts. I just wanted some dry looking botany to pop on the base and give it some foliage and just look a little bit more unique and interesting. Pick some dry desert looking plants and stick them randomly to the base. I'd personally hunt for a fairly boring looking bit of the desert and pop the plants right in there. Somewhere away from the dunes and less interesting looking cracks and my actual straw tufts looked a little bit plain and boring in the end so just to add a little bit of variance I'll add a splash of pallid bone speed paint and let that plant slurp it up which will add some random dry colouring. I'm going to apply the speed paint to the base of the tuft giving it a slight shadow but just enough of the paint that over time some will be dragged up the plant all the way up the tuft with a kind of capillary action or something that will make it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more different and a little bit more random. Continuing adding the little details that will make this base look sick, I have a few sand coloured rocks to add in. I'll use a tiny bit of PVA glue dipping each rock in the glue before carefully placing it on the base. I do always prefer to put my rocks near the foliage as I think it looks cooler and more natural. Obviously feel free to put them anywhere you fancy really. Looking nice, looking very, very nice. Neat, impressive, desert-esque looking base. Only one thing left to do in terms of painting and that is to give the base a quick rim job. For that we'll be using another War Paint Fanatic paint and this one is Onyx Skin, a mid-deep skin tone. The step is super simple, add just a couple of coats all the way around the edge of the base. I want to mention that I did try black on this kind of base, but in my opinion it was a little bit too stark, a little bit too contrasting, and it actually detracted too much from the base itself. You'd find your eyes sort of drawn to the darkness under the base instead of actually looking at the cool textures on top. I'd recommend experimenting as always and find what works for you. Base all rim now and I think this piece looks absolutely spot on. This is exactly what I was going for, a desert, a sand, an arid adventure land. All covered and looking dry as fuck. But we're not just here to paint bases and admire them, we're going to want to put a miniature on the tippity top. For this particular base I've pulled off one of my Astra Militarians. 
taking it from another base I did in the past, but I think this miniature painted up in this kind of desert theme camouflage slash uniform will look pretty perfect in this biome. In other videos, I've attached the miniature using super glue. I've also used plastic glue. In this video, I'll do a little bit of pinning, and that is probably the most secure option for locking this guy in place. Using my tiny electric drill, I'll cut two holes, one in each of the feet of the soldier. I'm gonna pour in a little bit of plastic glue into each hole and then slide in a little cutting of paper clip that I use for pinning. Once the glue has melted the plastic and then reset around the pins, I'm gonna use a little bit of brown paint from earlier just to dip the bottom of the pins in and then place the miniature on the base where I want him. This is gonna leave behind two little dots of paint so I can see where I wanna drill the holes in the base to slide my pins through. Another quick bit of drilling, this electric drill really does make light work of this and we've got two holes in the base to slot our miniature into. Give the miniature a little push and pop his pins through the other side of the base and on this bit, I'll use a little bit of super glue to lock it all in place. After the glue is all dried and is nicely set in place, I'll just add a finishing touch, a little sprinkle, a light dusting of the ancient stone on his boots just to blend his feet in a little with the environment he's in. I do think this is a very fitting place for this style of desert imperial guard and he's very happy in his new home. There we have it, done and dusted. Let us know in the comments below what you think and if there are any other sorts of bases you'd like to see done on the channel. I'm starting to actually run out of ideas, so you're more than welcome to suggest some below. As always, you've watched it, now paint it.